Good evening, everyone. Grab something here. Uh, and welcome to the Frank Ratchie Studio for Creative Inquiry, uh, the research laboratory of the College of Fine Arts here at Carnegie Mellon University, uh, and your favorite laboratory for atypical, antidisciplinary, and interinstitutional research and outreach at the intersection of art, science, technology, and culture. We are uh, thrilled to host tonight uh, Team Lab. Uh, before I, I introduce them, I just want to make a couple quick announcements. Um, okay, you got the announcement about voting. If you haven't voted, go vote. Who voted today? Hey, who didn't raise their hands? You got to vote. Okay, maybe you're a non-citizen or something. Okay, or maybe you got, you got, you got uh, shut out by the forces of evil. All right. Uh, <laughs> It happens. Um, I want to make a brief announcement. We're going to have another fantastic lecture next Monday, November 12th. Uh, new media artist Addie Wagenknecht. She's a big deal also, and you should really catch her lecture. All right, so she'll be speaking here Monday, November 12th. Uh, please note the time. It's unusual for us tonight to have a lecture at 6.30. Normally our lectures are at 5. Her lecture next Monday, the 12th, will be at 5 p.m. Um, so uh, a brief introduction here to Team Lab. Uh, Team Lab. Uh, was uh, is a, an amazing Japanese new media conglomerate collaborative collective. Um, they have been uh, active since 2001, um, producing new media installations all over the world. This year alone, they have had large exhibitions in Paris, Helsinki, Tokyo, and the founding of their own museum in Tokyo. Um, uh, we're really lucky and fortunate tonight to have Sakai, who's one of the co-founders, and also Takeshi and Jasper. They're all joining us here from Tokyo. And um, uh, they tell me that they have 600 employees and that they are hiring. So uh, uh, with that said, uh, I it's really my pleasure to, um, to give this over to Sakai, Takeshi, and Jasper from Team Lab. Thanks so much. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Daisuke Sakai from Team Lab. Um, I'm 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 glad. It's like I'm, I'm surprised to have these uh, many students here, um, and uh, I'm so excited to have this presentation uh, uh, for today. And uh, I'm the co-founder of Team Lab. I found it, I started in 2001, and he is Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> He's an engineer in, uh, in the interactive team in, in Team Lab. So, uh, so first half, I'll uh, present it like uh, overall of uh, what we do in Team Lab. And afterwards, he'll uh, present it more like project-based what we're doing and how we're doing it and how we're making it. So, and after that, we can have some questions. So just free, free, feel free to ask. So. Let's start, but uh, beginning, before I start, um, who have ever heard of Team Lab? Just, wow, <laughs> so cool. Um, and who have ever experienced the, the exhibition in, of Team Lab? Whoa, whoa, that's, that makes it very uh, easier for me to present it. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, great. Then uh, I'll start my presentation from, so um, uh, as, uh, as he had introduced me, um, we founded. I founded uh, this company, uh, Team Lab, in 2001 with my friends, five friends. Actually, I, my my background is uh, my my background is uh, robotics. I was doing humanoid robotics, so I, I know <laughs> I knew I knew CMU from robotics. So uh, I'm glad to be here, um, Ali Army, and. Um, now we have more than 600 people, as, as he said, uh, with 60% is engineers, and 20% is from the creative side, 20% is we call it catalyst. Catalyst is like, like project manager or director, but uh, they, they're like a hub, not like they direct someone, but they, they're like a, they work like a hub. So, and in software field, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, ba uh, different backgrounds from like machine learning, computers and software from server side, front end side or like doing like unity or doing uh, many many uh, languages and like in the creative side we have like computer graphic designers graphic designers UI UX designers so we have a print um, um, we have a vast uh, variety of specialists and we gather in team and do it uh, do projects uh, and things and uh, as uh, yeah so it's, I think it's much more easier to show you what we're doing. So um, 
I think uh, we have two sides. Like uh, Team Lab has, as I think many of you know, Team Lab is like digital art. Uh, we, we do digital art, but sometimes we do client works, like you are you are your expert. So first, I presented to you about uh, digital art and some keywords that is very important for us. And afterwards, I, I'll show you some of uh, the UI UX client works. So uh, start from digital art and. Uh, the first keyword we call it uh, is the is very important for this art is body immersive. So it's quite different from the art that is just be shown and you watch it. You'll be inside and you'll be immersed by your, by the audience will be immersed in in the artwork. So I'll show. I start showing these artworks. So this is the the art museum in Tokyo. Uh, we call it Team and Borders, um, uh, and it's, it's more than uh, it's about ten thousand square meters. We use about five hundred uh, projectors, and there's more than sixty artworks inside, and everything is interactive. No, everything's real time rendering, and. So we have more than 60 artworks inside and all the artworks is connected and they communicate with each other. So, so there's no time that it'll, you'll, see the, you'll see the same scene again. So every time, you, every time it, it changes by how people act or the, like the seasons, time and everything. So uh, even though you're in the same room, you'll see, the, it, you'll see like a, a different content. And another exhibition that we started in uh, in Tokyo is we call it Team of Planets. It's about seven thousand square meters, and that is so big. And but we have like five installations here. But one each installation is so big. It's like in this we call it Crystal Universe. The all the uh, the floor ceiling is all covered with mirror, and it's all LED. So it's like you're like floating. It's like you're floating in, in the sky, and you can control all the uh, LED by your smartphone. You can choose your own star and you can slow it in, so everyone can make it. Everyone can make this uh, this universe with other people. So simultaneously, people can throw in their stars, everything, and it, it'll make the it'll make the room. And. In this uh, exhibition, you have to get off your shoes, take off your shoes, take off your foxes, and you have bare feet. You, you go up this uh, stream, and uh, there's a waterfall there. That, that's a real one. <laughs> and, uh, and there's this, we call it black hole. You, you go over that cushion, and there's this pool that there's a koi fish fishing on and swimming, and if you touch the koi fish, it starts to bloom. So if there's a lot of people, there will be a lot of flowers blooming, and if there's small people, there will be small flowers blooming. So again, and we do like do uh, uh, make like scent, uh, smell. It's, uh, so it's not just from your eye. It can be like you can touch it, you can smell it, you can feel it. And we think that it's, our, our artwork is very like, we can enjoy it at the same time, in the same place, and you have to be there. So you can just experience that, that, that side only. So in these walls, you, you can touch and it interact with, and, it, and the color will copy to other walls. And if, the, if other people touch it, it, it copies. So it's like, everyone's making the room. So this is uh, like a giant dome, like half the size. I mean, like half the size of this uh, this studio, and the the floor is all miller. So it's like, and uh, because it's we're really projecting on the dome, uh, it looks like you don't need any glasses, but it feels like you're uh, you have this uh, three dimensional. Uh, you feel like it's three dimensional, and uh, they lay down on these. Uh, Pause. After like five minutes, you start to feel that you are moving. So it's like it's different. You, 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 first, it's like they're float. I mean, they're floating to you, but afterwards, you, you start to feel like you're floating. So it's it's it's. I think it's quite 
maybe it's diff- beautiful to see it in the music. I mean, like the the movies, but it's so different to to experience it. So, and uh, most of the um, artworks we use like light, like we project it, or like we use LED or screens. But sometimes we use like real objects. This is the real uh, orchid, the living orchid. Uh, floating like uh, from, the, uh, from the ceiling, like 3,000 orchids, and it's like a curtain. If you go inside, the orchid will go up, and you'll, it'll make like a the dome around you. You can move around the dome will like stick to you, and if there's two people come in and it, it mixes up, the dome will be larger. So another concept is that uh, people not just with, with the the artwork, the art artwork is it would be more enjoyable with other people, not just by only people. And because it's real orchid, it smells very nice. And it's, yeah, and then, and and in the morning and the evening, it, it smells different because there there are many kinds of orchids inside. So not just watching it. So, l- not like other art, I mean traditional art, uh, not just watching it, just we're, we, we want to put the audience inside the artwork and be uh, we a part of the artwork and that make the inference the environment and change the environment and change the artwork itself too. So this is the first com- the first keyword for digital art that we do. And another concept or another thing that we found is that we think that the, the re- relationship inside our digital art artwork that uh, relation be- among people could change to a positive thing. And I'll show you how what I mean. So this is a. Um, uh, artwork for flowers and people. So in this artwork, um, if there's a people, if uh, a person's standing there, the flowers bring around them, and if you touch it, it, it goes out. And as I said, I found, I found this company in 2001, but in the art scene, we had, like, it took like 10 years to be in an art scene. And now we're artists in a, a, a gallery, a modern art gallery called Pace, Pace in uh, New York. Uh, we are part of the artists there. That our debut of the Pace Gallery was 2013. So that we had uh, the um, opening event in New York in 2013, but we saw that where no one would knew us then. So uh, no one would came, but we. But fortunately, a lot of people came. And we presented the same, this, this thousand people at the, the Pace Gallery, but well, fortunately there were, there were so many people, but unfortunately there was too many people. So there was no flowers, just peoples, right? <laughs> so after that, um, um, uh, this guy here, <laughs> asked us how it works and uh, we, we told them we told them we we're happy but not happy because there were so many people that we could show them any flowers so and he started to talk to other strangers uh, around him and he uh, he gathered around some group and, and uh, went out for a while and after that these flowers starts to bloom and bloom of course it's software <laughs> so it, it interacts like that so by watching this, we saw that this is something difficult, I mean different from the traditional art. What I mean here is that this is Mona Lisa, of course you know, and uh, it's very famous for like Mr. Smile, the beauty and everything. And I think many of you have uh, have been to like Rubel in, in Paris and it's, it's very famous for the crowds too. <laughs> It's very famous. It's so crowded because there's only one masterpiece, and everyone wants to see it. Everyone will occupy one piece, right? So if you have a chance to see that one piece by yourself in Ruble, it'll be so, it'll be so happy, right? But but different from that, in our artwork. So this is uh, some some one of the artworks where we do the person in the front is uh, standing there. 
So because she is standing there, the water, waterfall splits and the flower starts to bloom. And because of her, I mean, thanks to her, the other person can see the, the flowers. So you can, you can occupy our artwork by, by, a, by, by one person, but it's much more, it's like, you, you, in, like in Mona Lisa, you dislike other people. You, you, you want other people to get off, get, get, rid, get rid of, you want to get rid of other people. But in this artwork, because there are, if there's other audience inside the our artwork, it, they, and they will interact with the artwork itself and it makes it beautiful. So uh, you don't have to dislike other people that who is watching in the, in the same art. Right, and like in most of which, uh, the museums, if the kids are running around and they will be scolded, especially in Japan, it was so strict. So, and uh, but in our artwork, uh, if they run around, maybe like there will be more flowers, maybe or like maybe more like fishes. So, so uh, they don't dislike the kids. <laughs> they don't have to. You have to scold the kids and. And this, um, you see, it's quite difficult to see, but this is, uh, his, his name is Takeshi, uh, Takashi. Uh, he's my friend. Uh, the, the, he's, he's laying down. He's 40 years old. Uh, and he was, uh, he's, he was installing this artwork in Paris and London and for two days. And he, he didn't sleep for like 48 hours or 60 hours. He didn't ha take any shower. And uh, he was exhausted after installing. It has finished. And he lay down and he fainted and the, he was sleeping on the floor. After like two or three hours, uh, after two, two or three hours later, the, the museum staff was like taking photos of him because there was so many flowers on, on, <laughs> on, on, on this 40 year old no, not taking the shower man, right? <laughs> so, well, Imagine if it was in Ruble, it's like, it'll be quite different from them. Like, it'll be kicked out, right? <laughs> anyway, so this is some kind of power that maybe this uh, has. So, okay. And another concept, uh, because, we, because everything is digital, um, uh, we, th we can transcend the borders of, of the object or transcend borders of by, uh, the artworks. Uh, uh, the museum, the, I, I, I said, uh, we call it Te Team Lab Borders. So, uh, as I said, there's more than 60 artworks in this, uh, in this uh, uh, museum, but like this, you see this bird? The, the bird will fly among all the artworks. So, because we, everything is digital, we can communicate with this code, so we can like communicate, it, it, can, it could be networked. So, every single thing is like, the bird will fly around uh, in the museum, like, like, like if you meet like a bird in the forest, and if you if you track the bird, it will like go, and you can see the experience of the bird. It is something like that, or like there's some other motif, like these fishes. They swim around our museum, so you can see the fish fish content wherever they go so even though it's the same room if the fishes are in uh there'll be all the fishes and uh it'll be all it, it'll be different all the time so the fishes are going into that led and they'll they'll swim three-dimensionally So this is something that the analog artwork cannot do. So, or we're producing a restaurant in Tokyo called Sagaya. So this is a special room, and uh, we have like it's a full course, and there's the wagyu. And if you put the plate, the all the plate has the motif. So the motif will go out to the table go out like that every plate will be different and we 
in Japan we have a lot of seasons, so every month is different because every month we need we have a, a flower, a different flower that is blooming. So, so the like, if there's a bird coming out from a plate, it will go from the tabletop to the wall. It's because it's connected, and maybe go to other people's plate. So it's transferring all the materials, maybe the dimensions and everything. So this is another concept. And uh, another, maybe like a project that we're doing is called Digital City, Digital Nature. What I mean is that um, because we're using digital, like we use light as a painting, we can paint anywhere. Like in the cities, we can use, make use of the architecture. This is uh, in Singapore. Uh, we do have a permanent uh, museum in uh, this uh, Marina Bay Sands Art, Art Science Museum. So this was an opening event for them, for that uh, exhibition. So we projected to that architecture and uh, we made use of that architecture itself as a screen, as a campus. So in this, you can, you can choose your uh, Chinese character, that means flower, if you throw it in, the flower will be there. So everyone could throw all the Chinese character and make this uh, world with other people. Okay, and the, so that was digitizing city. And, and, and we can digitize nature too, because we, it's not like putting a big sculpture in the nature, you have to cut down all the trees, but um, we, this is a, a, a park that was like, has a lot of history for like more than 400 years in Japan. And there's like sacred rocks and sacred trees, but we made use of the trees and rocks and nature itself, and we projected or made, use the light to put all, this is a pond, and uh, we made use of everything. And this, this park is so big, like uh, more than 500,000 square meters. So you can walk around and wander around and like meet all the, like we have like about 15 artworks. So you can just wander around for like two hours. So that's one of the concepts that, because of what we're doing in digital, we, we can make, we can, we can make it everything in campus. So another concept, uh, our, our team, uh, like the company name is Team Lab. So we make everything in teams, in projects. So we do have some uh, kids projects that we believe that co-creation is very, very, very important for, for the kids to learn or like to learn that it's very, but that, that it is very fun to co-create with, with other people. So in this, uh, this, this work, you put the, these blocks and it like connects like that. So for this one, it connects for like a railroad. You put it, it connects like a railroad. And if it is, if it is straight enough, it, it, it comes faster. So it's very simple rule. So kids can just understand how it works. So, and because this table is big enough for more than like 10 kids to play at the same time, uh, one, one child cannot reach the other side. So uh, children will start to make use of, make, like, uh, make, make use of other people's ideas and make uh, like a city. And not just not competing, but making making use of other people's ideas and making a new thing, ma making a new uh, concept, like making a new city. Or so we've been doing this project for like four years, maybe, and like more than six hundred and six million people have experience it, but uh, this one you can sketch 
a fish, you can scan it, and it goes into the aquarium. And it, you can touch it, you can interact with it, you can feed them. It's like, yeah, kids go crazy with it. And, <laughs> and we do have a lot of the, we, just sketch streets. It is like sketch aquarium, sketch town. In the sketch town, you can like draw like a car and two dimensional thing. If you scan it, it goes three dimensional. And we're making it automatically three dimensional. And because we can make it three dimensional, uh, after scanning it, we can make a paper clap. So you, if you cut it and glue it, even though you just draw a, like a two dimensional car, you have a three dimensional one without any 3D printer. <laughs> Uh, the latest one, uh, the, the latest series of this sketch series, we call it Grafty Nature. So all these alligators, frogs, and like butterflies would, was drawn by the kids, and they would go inside this this environment. This, and um, we, lately, we're not just projecting on the like the flat walls and flat floors. We make it look more like three dimensional. Uh, objects so that would make people be more immersed in, inside the, the artwork and this one we have this food chain so like the alligator will like eat lizards and lizards will eat like uh, frogs but kids can is the top so they can just squash everything <laughs> as you can see like a splatoon is like you just squash it <laughs> okay so so this is, <laughs> all right, all right. So this is what we do um, as digital art. And uh, we, there's a lot of exhibition going on all over the world. And in the other side, uh, we do, um, sometimes we do like digital solutions from UI UX. So I'll just talk a little bit about it. Uh, so it's, it's in English, I mean in Japanese, but um, now we've done a project in Tokyo Disneyland. So uh, we developed an app for Disneyland. So um, maybe the difference between the UI UX company or like consulting company, what we do is like, we do have a UI UX team. We do have the implementation team and we do have the, all the team inside to implement it. We think that not just consulting, but implementing and not just design thinking, but design doing is very much more important to, to do it. So for in this app, you can just buy uh, tickets, you can just go inside uh, and you can just see how uh, Tokyo Disneyland is very famous for a long queue you have to line up for like two hours three hours so um you can see all the 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 how much you have to line up or and and it's famous for like it, it, the checking is uh in the uh you have to line up for checking the to check so you can just scan all the souvenirs and you can just uh afterwards you can uh, you you they, they can send you or there's a hotel and you can there's a long line there so you, you, you can just check in with your app and you, you can just the all the the keys is could be by, done by this app so you can open the 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 room by by your key so so every single experience we design and we we implement it in this one app so this is something what we do or I don't know, it's different maybe in the uh, United States, but all the, the banking app in Japan, is, is, they, they suck a lot, so <laughs> they, 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 they're, not, they, they, they're not good. So we, we redesigned we redesign the, the banking app, so the, we redesigned it, the UI UX, everything to be very simple, to be useful, because just people just want to transfer money or just like see the 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 account but you have to tap like six or seven times to see it so i just we we changed it uh 
and these things is very is it's quite uh, it's it's quite easy to say but it's quite difficult to implement in this like client work so we start from the beginning we we design the experience we do the ui ux part and we implement it and we do uh, maintenance and too well this one um there's a uh, lot and lots of vending machine in tokyo so we made this uh we the client was uh the rail company the, the biggest rail company they have this vending machine so the the task I mean like the goal uh that they gave us is that to make them some, something innovative vending machine just that so we <laughs> it was so big but we saw that uh, vending machine doesn't know who who bought it and what was in it and the everything so we connected by uh doing uh, making an app to who, who can buy it so you can buy it by app by the vending machine and that makes the data connect everything so the what we think was innovative was to predict what to put on on this this vending machine so we predict what to put it we tell the the guys who who's putting putting the juice and everything so um so that's that part is like the innovative thing that most of people think that like if, if you say it's innovative most of japanese like companies think think that you have to be like fancy movies on here but we don't think that that way so we start from the goal we we, we do it and we design all the vending machine too so do the app so server size and everything and last one and we do like promotions like we do promotion like muji so this is you're gonna get sleepy from here <laughs> so we are this is a promotion for this cushion and it makes you sleepy so <laughs> it, it, it will it will and we made this film um to present that it will be you you'll be so sleepy on it <laughs> So now it, it was presented on the stores on the YouTube, but not only the, not only there we made this app called Muji to Relax. It's so simple. You can hear these natural sounds, and it makes it, and and this this it has this um, uh, have this uh, sound inside that it makes you sleepy. So by using this, by using this. But like most of the promotion, you just you just like see it once. But but making like this these kind of apps, it gets in inside your life, so they'll like do it again and again and again. So that makes a branding. So that's how we brand Muji uh, for for this uh, thing. So uh, another uh, the last one. So we do like a lot of shop like. Uh, entry design too so this one we put like this is uh, like a mixture of like digital art and uh, uh, digital solution so there's a this is a, in the museum that you can just uh, search your like this is a poster that is inside the, the museum you can search it you can find it you can touch it and do something so anyway so these projects we have like more than 100 maybe 150 projects going on right now and in our company because that's why we need like more than 600 people <laughs> and um, we work in team we work in team uh, as like I said uh, engineer uh, engineer from from a lot of back uh, from a lot of ba uh, backgrounds uh, designers uh, catalysts get around in projects and they work in like team and when i say team it's a it's a, a collection of people that has a specialty so a lot of people maybe i think maybe a lot of you are from computer science side maybe a lot of you are from fine art side maybe some of you have done both but even if you're like just doing the computer science uh, there are a lot of people like more than i think jasper would say uh, would present about it, but i think 95 percent of our engineer has never like has like education in in art side i think so 
it's like you have to be specialist and you can just get around it's better to if you have like fine art and technologies that that's great so that that would be great but you don't it doesn't have to you don't have to know about art you don't have to know about design because we have the specialists in art, specialists in design, so we can work in team. So we have to make use of the good point of people, and that's the, that's the concept of our team. And we do these kind of projects, vast projects all around the world. So that's the overall of what we do. And um, I think Jasper would like take from here. And uh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah we, yeah, we are very open to the internship, yes, yes. <laughs> That's one of the objects I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to all the universities that, yes, recruiting uh, the, like the, is one of my objects, of course. So anyway, uh, oh, uh, one more thing. Um, uh, the team lab, we are doing a lot of projects uh, abroad in uh, Japan. And um, uh, we are opening up an uh, exhibition in New York. Uh, next year, uh, we, uh, the team of planets, we, we're going to make a team of planets New York uh, next fall, I think. So you can just go to New York, or maybe you, of course, you can come to Tokyo. <laughs> and there's a lot to experience. Uh, it's, it's like you have to experience first. So <laughs> well, anyway, so thank you. I'll, um, I'll pass to Jasper, and uh, he'll uh, Present date more like specific things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll take it. Thank you. Thank okay, you thank you. All right. That so close. Anyways, my name is Jasper. I am one of the interactive engineers for Team Lab. I a little bit about me. I came in two years ago now, and I went to Tufts University, and I studied computer science. As Sakai San was mentioning, you don't need necessarily an art background to, to work at Team Lab, and even the interactive team were all about art, so how did I end up there? Well, more luck than anything, but it's been a great two years, and I've worked on a lot of the projects, actually, that Sagai san kind of outlined and, you show, and showed some images of, like especially the most exciting was the new museum in Tokyo, and I worked on a few of the art pieces there, and I'm going to discuss a bit in depth about how we made one of the artworks. Um, and the title is The Journey of a Journey. Because the art I worked on was, was a journey. But whenever I talk to people about Team Lab, there are two main questions everybody asks. And the first, which some of you might be thinking, is yeah, how do we come up with the ideas for projects? Because that's, am I, am I, how am I on the mic? Okay, good. And how, how do we come up with ideas for the projects? Because everybody, like especially people from the art background, are really curious about, okay, what ideas actually make it into the museums, into the exhibitions, and what's that creation process like? And naturally, the second one is, okay, how do you actually build them? You have the idea, then how do you build it? How do you implement it? And what's that process like? So hopefully I can address both of those points on one specific project. Now, you haven't seen this video. I'll just show a quick little peek of it. This is a project. The official name is Walk, 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 Search, Deviate, Reunite. And I just skipped to the next video. Let's see if I can actually play this one. Um, this is a video from the installation that it was actually in Singapore. The first time we showed this work and we went there as a team of uh, I think six of us, we went and we installed this in Singapore in December of 2017. So a bit ago, but you can see there are a lot of characters. They sort of walk around this maze-like structure and they walk through different scenes uh, throughout Japan. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you more videos in the next, the next video here. And this is, this is a video of the same work, uh, but we evolved it and we changed it a bit for the museum in Odaiba, which was actually its original intended target. But this, just towards the end here, there's a really interesting part where you'll see how it's not only the singular piece, but it interacts with, as the Kaizen was mentioning, like other artworks that are in the museum. So you'll see even this wall, Right now it's these, these characters there, but occasionally like the, when the characters start walking, they'll walk through those walls and they'll walk along the corridors. Those big sunflowers that you briefly just saw, they're actually part of this installation as well. There they are again. So the characters walk through and as the crows pass them, they interact with the crows and they, they walk and, and the one key other moment I wanted to show you guys here is, here you can see they're walking into the flowers and the flowers start to bloom over their bodies. So. 
They're kind of like a living, moving group that sort of goes throughout the museum. So that was the end product, but now let's walk through the actual steps on how we get there. And also, by the way, I'm from the interactive team, so I like presentations to be interactive. Anytime there's a question, raise your hand and I will try to address it if something doesn't make sense or you want more information on something. Oh, I have a question. Yes. How much electricity does it? <laughs> <laughs> how high are your electricity? They are very, very high. Okay. But I, I don't know the exact number, but I can tell you that. We had to install many special generators and, and had to outfit the whole building uh, very specifically. And I'll go in, in the technical section at the very end. I'll address some, some interesting uh, problems we had originally with the power. But it's very expensive. All right, we're hitting me with the questions. I like it. I like it. All right. Yes. The audio is part of the project. So I'll go into kind of what goes into the project and I'll go into sound a bit. I, yeah, and more times for questions after. So don't don't totally bombard me at, at this time. Anyways, so the original idea, there were a couple of different inspirations, and one of them was this old story called uh, the Ten Bulls, which the, the, the kanji there is like Ten Cow Map, uh, with Jugyuzu, what we call it internally, even though officially the name is like Walk, 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 uh, Search, Deviate, Reunite. So this old 11th century story that goes through sort of 10 steps that's a parable about like Buddhist meditation and, and reaching enlightenment. And I'll just go through some of, the, some of the highlights of the story here. So you first, you search the bowl. You're in the pasture of the world. I endlessly push aside the tall grasses. So you're starting your process of meditation. Okay, you discover the footprints of the bowl. You explore a little bit. Then you perceive the bowl, okay, you sign up, you have this idea, but you're now searching for it. And I like this one because, oh, what artist can draw that massive head, those majestic horns? Okay, we're trying to capture that spirit. Then naturally, you got to catch the bull, you tame the bull, you ride the bull. Then the bull transcends. Okay, this, you can, you can interpret this how you want. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not a Buddhist expert. Then both the bull and self transcend. Okay, this makes more sense. You sort of reach enlightenment. It looks like the artist forgot to draw a picture here, but no, you're, everything becomes one. <laughs> Everything is all good. And finally, you return to society. I skipped step nine, but anyways, this is, this is the Buddha. You, you sort of are the teacher now. You're spreading wisdom, and you're at peace, and you can help uh, other people reach that stage. So this is an old tale, but it kind of it tells a story of progression, of a journey. And we wanted to, we were thinking about that story, like our CEO, Inoko san he especially liked this story. So he wanted to maybe incorporate it in a work. So this was one of the, the place of inspiration. Now, another source is something we were all thinking about was the idea of nonlinear storytelling. So instead of focusing on a main character, you have like a cast of characters and you can follow them as they progress throughout whatever story they're doing. And the story doesn't necessarily have a specific narrative. Everybody has their own objectives and their own, their own ideas and, and thoughts, and it might change over time, and it might change how you interact with it. And you can see this in sort of even modern video games, like you, the decisions you make now affect choices that happen later, or in specific plays where there's no necessary, like there's no structure, or now like movies even are sort of are incorporating this, this type of storytelling that isn't traditional, but now we can have more possibilities and make things more sort of non-deterministic. It feels more personalized. It feels more immersive. So we're thinking about that as well. Um, so that conceptually led us to some core ideas. We wanted the idea of like a journey. So characters that you could follow as you explore throughout the museum and non-deterministic, as, as I discussed before. And also, we needed to include the, the, the Oji sons, the little uncles and the bulls. We wanted to include that as well because kind of key to the original story. Now, we also had to keep in mind sort of what the museum and what the physical constraints were. So this is a map of the third floor of our museum in Tokyo. And you can see, like, the idea was we had all these hallways because all the rooms are connected. And we wanted to put an artwork in the hallway. And a hallway acts almost like a maze. And you can see the different colors. We even refer to them like internally by their color, but you can see like the yellow at the top, you have the, the purple corridor, you have the red, you have the orange, and they connect all these different rooms, but we wanted a way to bring together a lot of the different artworks and have them interact. We thought that these characters and their journey, we, as we follow them, we get to explore more and learn more about the artwork as well. So we wanted to incorporate some of these physical constraints in how we were designing the piece. So we got 
the Buddhist idea. That's my interpretation of nonlinear. And then we have the map at the bottom, and that leads to the concrete idea of characters. They journey throughout the museum, but we incorporate, like we love to incorporate the seasons and different aspects of Japan and Japan's nature, especially. So they journey throughout the seasons of Japan and different characters. They have different routes they'll take, and nothing is, is exactly determined. There's some random chance involved, and we wanted them to interact with the other artwork. So as you saw briefly, like the crows flew by, flew, flew by and when the crows fly by the characters they sort of look at the crows and they they let this little oh sound that's that's quite enjoyable but uh sadly i can't i can't do that here uh you'll have to take my word for it anyways we have the idea now the next step is we assemble the team because as the guys on mentioned we're team lab we have teams and different people have different uh specializations so we want to put together a team that is best suited for the project so for this one and every project is a little different but this one naturally we got the catalyst they're the project manager and sort of binding agent that decides what we need for a project and how we put it together so we got the catalyst we got a member from and I, these pictures are all by the way from the artwork and they they rep oh they're they're very orange there they're they're gray on my screen but they're actually i like them in orange uh <laughs> I love this guy. He's a frog with a little hat. He's just fantastic. So we have the art team, which they are in charge of the 3D modeling and the texture work. And they naturally made the frog and the, the rabbit and all of the, the textures and the models you see. Now we have a member of the interactive team, the, the wizards, as I like to think of. Um, then we have the sound team. So for this project, there is a lot of sound incorporated. And every time you interact with the character, you can actually touch them. And you can touch the flowers. And you can touch pretty much everything in there. And sound will come out of the speakers that there's like yeah we mentioned always that there's 520 projectors and like 450 computers or i got or maybe mix those up but there's also i don't know maybe 800 900 speakers so that's a big concept of our artwork as well and then we also have the computer vision team and they're in charge of all the sensor work and how we actually take the interactive data so people touching the wall and how we turn that into data that the interactive team we can use to dictate the rules and what happens so then the catalyst kind of, I only drew two areas here, but it actually goes to the, the CV team and the sound team as well. They sort of organize things. Then the, the art team, they sort of send the content to the interactive team. Sound team also sends it to the inter interactive team and we decide what to do with it. Also CV to the interactive team. I like to think of us, we're really the central hub. But in reality, like up at the top in the throne, we have the, the art director, who also often is the same person from the, the ESO team, so from the, the art team. But they're sort of, they, they have to approve everything at the end. And they talk about the, the, the main concept of the work. And they make sure that everything is consistent and looks good. Because sometimes what I design looks terrible. So they have to say, oh, you got to make that better. OK. Other projects, we have a ton of other roles. We have hardware teams. We have sometimes the interactive. And, and I'm just talking about our artistic um, and our art, art projects here. but. Hardware teams, so the balloons you saw before, like the team lab balls. So we have hardware teams working with Arduinos and uh, and other really interesting like little carts and other new things that might be in the. Uh, anyways, uh, then we also have mobile apps. So for instance, I worked on a project doing uh, like the pre-game show for a basketball team in Osaka, and we had like a mobile app where you could send out basketballs at the court. So we had a mobile app team person sending data to me where I would put basketballs on the court uh, with the projector. And then we also have machine learning, the project that Sakai-san showed before about the restaurant. Like that was actually the first project I worked on when I entered Team Lab. And to detect which plates are in what location, we have a machine learning team uh, deciding which plate it is and what they send the data to us. And then the interactive team, we decide what to spawn. So a really bizarre way to use machine learning to detect a plate as you're eating. But hey, it works really well. And then we also have construction teams and other teams that I could talk about for a while. but. That's not that interesting. So project timeline. This is kind of the core and guts of what happens. So we have the proposal phase where we talk about the idea, we evolve the idea, and that involves the catalyst, the, the 3D modeler and texture maker and the art director, as well as there's a white area there because the interactive team, we're often a part of that uh, process as well. And we talk about what can be done and also like if it's a project that involves more hardware or more interactive content, then we discuss what's possible. So how we can enhance the work with specific types of interaction or specific types of hardware. And then you enter sort of the development block, which is where the interactive engineer and the art director 
and the catalyst. We all work really closely to sort of evolve and first design a prototype, then to sort of iterate over that content and then always check in with the art director to see the direction it's going. And the interactive team, uh, I haven't really discussed in detail what we do, but we're in charge of all of the computer graphics. So even though the, the ASO team, they do the modeling and the textures, the interactive team, we do all the real-time simulation. So anytime you see water flowing and that breaks around something, that's something we design. Or we have to put together the, the core app itself. So we're like a combination of computer graphics specialists and like software engineers. So it's a really interesting role where you get to learn a lot about graphics and art and programming and kind of linking a lot of things together. Then we have, like during the installation period, we have the sound team and the computer vision team involved. And we're on site, I think, for the Tokyo Museum. It was about two months being on site that we were there almost every day, kind of working on the content and seeing how it looked. Any questions about the timeline and like how the project works? For this project, for example, in terms of number of people, there was one main catalyst, but one backup catalyst. So that was two people. There were... There was one uh, main art director and then one other modeler, so that was another two people. For the interactive team, it was myself and one other person, so that was two people. One person on the sound team, and then the CV team is kind of like a, a glob of people where they all sort of, it's, it's like, oh, if this person is free, they'll work on this. If this person's free, they'll work on this. But they kind of design all of the, the interaction for the whole museum, so I'd say one person, really. So it, pretty small project, but it covers a lot of space. Question? Oh. Uh, how long? oh. How long are the timeline? Yeah, yeah, sorry. One, one, one. The timeline itself is about, for this project, it, we installed it in Singapore first, a different version of it, and then we installed it in uh, Tokyo, and I'd say both of those combined was maybe like a six-month timeline. So this one's quite long. Oh yeah, so the, the question was about uh, sort of maintenance and when things break, like how do we, how do we deal with that? Because um, we can't be on site all the time. Actually, the interactive team is quite small. It's maybe 18 people. Um, but we're in charge of almost all of the, the content that you saw, like the, the digital art installation and the content. So we're quite small. We can't be on site all the time. So we do have, for the museum in Tokyo, we've trained the entire staff. And like we, have a, we had a handover process where actually the catalyst um, is in charge of sort of making sure all of the pieces function. And things do break all the time. And sometimes one of our members will go on site. Tokyo is convenient, but oftentimes we'll have to train a team and we'll have them on the phone. Like for instance, for the Paris exhibition, we were on the phone pretty much every morning, uh, like making sure things were up to spec. And we had a whole list of things they would check. And if something was wrong, we would get the person on our side to sort of remotely see what the problem is and diagnose it and see if it was fixable. But it's a, it's a really interesting problem. And as we're growing, it's something we're really considering is how do we scale and how do we maintain the high level of quality in all the ex in all the exhibitions and installations. So it's something we're really thinking about, but so far we've been doing a, a pretty good job, I would say. So Singapore version showed briefly in the video, but here's like here's a here's this a, here's the characters that are going from the lotus field into the 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 springtime. So this is like the springtime scene where you have the, the, the tree in the spring. Then you got the bamboo with the, the fireflies that looks pretty orange, but that's uh, okay. Then we have the field of wheat, which looks really orange, but it's more it's more gold, I would say. Um, and then we have them walking through a different flower. This is like this, uh, another springtime flower. But this version, like it was the warm up for the version really in the museum in Tokyo. So we change a lot of the content. Like here you can see the characters are, they have a more of an illumination, but we have to take into consideration the space and the, the goal of the space. So actually for the version in Tokyo, this is in all of the corridors. So we wanted to really manage the lighting and control sort of the mood of how you walk through and like even how they, when we um, composite this artwork with the other artworks, we want to manage like how much light is actually emitted. So we made it a lot of the, here you can kind of tell, but it's actually a lot darker and it's more sort of, the characters are less illuminated and they're more sort of, they almost look like ghosts. So here we have a tree that, while the, the tree before was actually, it's like, oh, okay, you got a nice little cherry tree there. Here it's more, it's almost like from the, it, it's a more wiry tree and it's actually, it's all generative. So it's not using a model, it's, it's generative that, that one of our interactive engineers designed and there's the frog with the hat. I love this guy. He's, he's walking through it right now. And then we have like the lotus, in the lotus field, they're, they're more, 
they're actually they're whiter and they're almost like they're a lot more transparent so they emit less light but they look a lot more ghostly and we have sort of this like a fractally highlight sort of rippling through here um, and then the field of wheat is also like a lot darker and the characters are just darker themselves so we're, we're thinking about the museum we're thinking about what sort of effect we want and we we can manipulate and change the artwork based on those sort of ideas here we have the bamboo before it was green but now it's actually white if you can tell and we have once again the frog with the hat he's just he's everywhere i love that guy um so they're walking through sort of a more ghostly bamboo forest and here we have one of the brightest rooms but this is like they walk through these giant flowers and the flowers change every month depending on what season it is and and yeah the the corresponding flowers is uh, relates to what season is in Japan. This is like the cosmos flower, which I think is in, uh, I think actually it was two months ago. So it was one of the summer flowers. I want to briefly touch on some of the challenges we had because this presentation is more about the concept, but there's a lot of interesting technical things. As Sakai Sama was mentioned, we have to link all these artworks. So we're talking like through all the quarters we had, like for this project alone, I think I wrote 10 PCs here, but in thinking about it, I think there were more like 14 that we had to sync all the contents together because we're projecting over huge surfaces, connecting tons of projectors, like outputting really high resolution, but still can't cover all the areas. So we have to think about how to connect the PCs, how, how to work on the networking. We also, I talked, we, we had it in Singapore and Tokyo, but the layouts were different. So we had to manage sort of how we build something that's dynamic. We can change the size and change the placement of where the, like the, the, the bamboo or the lotus field or the, the, the trees are. We have to maintain really high performance. And the, the next point is sort of even high performance while linking between all these other artworks. So for instance, one projector is not only projecting our contents, but it's projecting the contents for the, the characters walking, the crows flying, the, the animals with the flowers walking. So we have all of these layers and we have to think about how can we uh, like keep the performance high, but also the image really beautiful. So there, I, I won't go into that, but also like linking other artworks together. So we had to develop like an API for all the artworks and then in terms of power, we had like, I think, yeah, yeah, so we had power, but we had even initial like hardware problems with the power supplies to some PCs because the graphics cards were gigantic and they were drawing too much power. So some power supplies were failing. So we had to address some of those problems as well. And also environmental issues like controlling the lighting and the ambiance and the color balance between like when we compose the layers and also the museum itself, we are still changing the layout. So we had to build a new exit somewhere because it was too mazy and people couldn't find the way out. So we're like, we're building a new exit. Uh, so we have to adjust the artwork there. And one of the coolest things about all of our projects is they're never static. Like we constantly have to evolve them and change like how, how we present them. So they never say the same. So some new ideas, for example, for this project is where, where we just actually just finished it last week. And now between the months for the big flowers, for instance, we don't just have one flower showing. We sort of blend between the, the flowers for the next month or the previous month, depending on the date. And we're changing the wheat to look more like this, more in like sort of bunches rather than in a whole field. And we're changing the fireflies to like synchronize. They eventually like synchronize their lighting pattern. And we sort of want to liquefy characters at the end to symbolize like when they reach enlightenment or satori. So there's a lot of cool ways we can change the work. And now that we have spaces, it's almost like a, a playground for interactive art where we can go in at night and we can actually test out new content. And it's like a, it's like a digital version of Night at the Museum, but we get to dictate what's shown. And it's, it's really exciting, actually. Like sometimes on the walls, we'll put like giant whales swimming along and see how that looks and, and see if we want to change things over time. So that's really fun. Um, thank you, thank you.